A few weeks ago, we posted a massive 360 millimeter AIO roundup. And in that video, we received a lot of comments from you guys that we might not have pushed things far enough. And I agree with you because in that video, we used a 9800X3D and Intel 285K, but there was one processor missing. It was the big boy, the 9950X. And what we're going to do in this video is rectify that situation. We're going to be using the 9950X with PBO enabled and it running at a full 250 watts all the time. And hopefully that will sort of like separate the men from the boys among some of the best 360 millimeter AIOs that we've tested. And if there was ever a CPU that could break the back of even the best AIOs out there, I agree, it would be this one. And for the AIOs that we've selected here, well, they're the ones that have performed the best for us on the AM5 platform so far. So the Cooler Master Atmos Stealth, Corsair Nautilus RS, Lian Li GA2 Lite Performance, and the Triax Panorama. Those are joined by the Thermalrite Frozen Edge, which was a really huge huge standout last time for its good performance and incredible price. One of the other coolers I decided to include here, it's, it's probably going to be a little bit more controversial for a lot of you guys, because this cooler actually came dead last in the Ryzen 9000 series testing that we did in that roundup. It is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 3 Pro. Because yes, based on the criteria that I put out for this video, we're testing the best of the best here. So this choice is probably completely biased. But actually, in my personal opinion, this is for sort of curiosity's sake. Was the disappointing performance we saw repeatable on the 9950X? Or would the damage be sort of like constrained to the 9800X3D we initially tested with? Mint strawberry, butter caramel, future dusk? All sounds like dessert, right? But these are all flavors of power. Because performance doesn't have to be black or white. This is the View 600, a full tower built for serious cooling, clean cable runs, and builds that deserve to be seen. You love the user experience and how it feels like someone's actually thought this through and like why didn't they do this sooner? This is full tower performance in designer flavor. The View 600 by Thermaltake, pick your flavor below. And to add even a little bit more context to things, I've decided to listen to a lot of you guys again and also add the original Liquid Freezer 3 360 to this video because that cooler did so bloody well in the Ryzen 7000 series testing. So we'll see now how it does on the Ryzen 9000 series compared to the Pro version. So let's start off with a full load scenario. And the two front runners shouldn't come as any surprise here. It's the Triax Panorama and Lian Li GA2 Lite Performance, which are typically within one or two degrees of one another and keep the processor under the 85 degree mark for most of their noise ranges. Then there's a jump upwards in temperature with the Corsair Nautilus, which hits around 88 degrees at 32 decibels, followed by very good cooling performance for its price right up until the 37 decibel mark. Then it hits the afterburners by gradually narrowing the gap with Lian Li until both are essentially tied. But you have to ask yourself, how loud do you want to let your AIO get? Because to me, anything over 40 decibels is just way too loud. The Cooler Master Atmos also puts down some impressive numbers. And look, I'm saying impressive because any cooler that can keep a lava hot 250 watt 9950X under 90 degrees at just 32 decibels deserves some huge credit. Thermal right? well, their frozen edge basically does the same thing. But you also have to remember, it's literally one third the cost of the Cooler Master and half the Corsair's price. And yet here it is hanging with the Corsair, losing by only about two degrees. And where do you think the Arctic coolers land? Well, guess what? It isn't as bad as it was with the 9800X3, that's for sure. The Liquid Freezer 3 Pro stays just ahead of the more affordable thermal right at every comparable decibel level by about a degree or so. Meanwhile, the original Freezer 3 360 is actually tied with the Pro version up until 34 decibels. And after that, it sort of starts slipping behind. And I know this is yet another bucket of cold water for folks who have been spoon fed this narrative about this cooler being simply the best around. But specifically on Ryzen 9000 series processors running at full load, it simply isn't. 
On the 9950X, its standing is better than it was with the 9800X 3D, and yet this simply makes it a middle-of-the-pack option, at least in noise normalized testing. And you can actually see this reflected when we narrow the focus down to 32 decibels. The liquid freezers, well, they're good when you consider we're comparing them to the best 360 AIOs we've tested on Ryzen 9000 series chips. But given the pricing spectrum here, the Pro is not worth the premium over the vanilla version if you care about noise output versus performance. Still, there's only about five degrees separating all of these coolers, and that's really not all that much to begin with. And at a higher noise level of 40 decibels, things tighten up even more, with only four degrees separating the thermal right from Triax, which is great news for anyone considering one of these. But that also puts a pretty sharp emphasis on the least expensive ones here, like the Nautilus, Frozen Edge, and even the Arctics. You don't need to spend an absolute fortune to get competitive cooling on a 9950X. But what about gaming? And yes, I know the vast majority of people who are buying this absolute beast of a chip are not using the 9950X for gaming the vast majority of the time. You're using it for those high level, high core workloads, but still, I wanted to talk about this because the reality is these are multifunctional systems and somebody who has a super expensive chip like this does expect to get sometimes some gaming use out of it. And as we bring up these results, I need to point out something that's absolutely critical. Even though we're using a game that's heavily multi-threaded with Cyberpunk 2077 in an area that's super NPC heavy, while well, all these AIOs are separated by at most two and a half degrees. As a matter of fact, you'll notice that most of them just flatline at some point, and that's because we've reached maximum efficiency of the cooler, and the only limiting factor here is the processor's IHS. Anyways, here, the Lian Li is the runaway winner, with all the other coolers giving numbers that are essentially tied with one another. And guess who benefits from that the most? Yep, the Arctics, which are right in the thick of things, but still showing a bit elevated temperatures compared to the absolute best coolers here, even at lower decibel levels. And while these temperatures are a full 10 degrees or so higher than they were on the 9800X 3D, if you're using your 9950X for a lot of gaming, any of these will be more than enough. But the Lian Li really does stand out as a cut above the rest. The other thing I wanted to do here is install a trio of Fantex T30 fans on every single one of the coolers that we've been testing here. And hopefully that'll allow us to maybe find a few hidden gems that will benefit from that fan swap. On the other hand, we're gonna see if any of these coolers have their actual designs holding them back rather than their fans. And at a normalized 32 decibels, the Triax and Lian Li are still the best, with the T30 failing to make any impact on their numbers. But the Nautilus alongside the two Arctics and Thermalrite all see noticeable temperature decreases, pointing towards their fans simply being less efficient than the T30s at this specific noise level. As a matter of fact, the thermal rate gets pushed into the top four coolers here. The same goes for the 40 decibel testing, but you also have to ask yourself, is it worthwhile to buy a $50 AIO and add over a C note worth of fans to get performance that's equal to something like the GA2 performance that costs about a hundred bucks to begin with? I mean, look, that's completely up to you, but personally, I don't think so. Either way, at this level, I don't think any of these AIOs benefit enough from a full fan swap to actually warrant the price. So now that we've seen what happens when we push all of these AIOs even further with a 9950X, has my opinion changed from that roundup that we did a couple weeks ago? The answer to that is absolutely not. Ultimately, what happens here with these higher end AIOs is the more you pay, the more features you typically get but that paying more does not necessarily align with better cooling performance as you get to the more expensive coolers. That's why I'd continue to recommend the Corsair Nautilus as an overall pick, with the Lian Li a very close second. The GA2 didn't win overall simply because, like I said in that huge roundup, I still have some burning questions about its pump longevity given Lian Li's history. But if you push that aside and assume that Lian Li's current generation of pumps is gonna be just as reliable as everything else out there on the market, well, it's obvious that they've found a sort of like secret sauce for insane and very, very very consistent cooling on Ryzen 9000 series chips. On the other hand, you're really not giving up all that much by paying about half the price for a Thermalrite Frozen Edge. And as for the million dollar question about these Arctic Liquid Freezer 3s, 
Well, what we can say now is that the Liquid Freezer 3 Pro sure as heck did a lot better on the 9950X than it did on the 9800X3D. And now that we're testing on a 9950X, we can actually compare our results to a bunch of the other ones that are out there right now. For example, Rob iTech also saw middle of the pack performance on this specific chip. While there were even some cases where the massive 420 millimeter version basically matched or came within two degrees of mid tier 360 millimeter coolers. But even then, it's not like these Arctics are bad AIOs. They actually perform pretty well here. It's just their ranking against the competition seems to vary a lot more from one platform to another and even one chip to another than some of the other coolers that we've been testing. Anyways, I guess that covers pretty much everything I wanted to in this video and, and I do have to hand it to you guys. You asked us for more intensive testing. You pressed for it in the comments for that roundup video. And that's exactly what we did. And it, it has really allowed us now to build this solid foundation for upcoming reviews. We're gonna use all of the learnings from this video and that roundup to review the Be Quiet coolers that we finally have in now. We have NZXT's new coolers and a bunch of other new companies that have sent us samples. And I can't wait to get to those reviews. Another thing I can't wait for is to get over this, this bloody cold that I've had now for like a month. So hopefully in the next video that you see from me, I'm not going to sound like I'm backed up like a, like a clogged toilet. And uh, I guess everybody stay healthy and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.